Welcome to Stock Market Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Quant hedge funds face China clampdown after rare account freeze. China tightens quant trading after freezing big funds accounts. Hong Kong is over unless China fixes its own economy, Roach says. Asia stocks to track US decline amid Nvidia nerves, markets wrap. Bill Ackman's stocks went up. Quant hedge funds face China clampdown after rare account freeze. Bloomberg. The Shanghai and Shenzhen bourses have pledged to tighten supervision of quantitative trading after suspending the accounts of Ningbo Lingjun Investment Management Partnership for three days. The exchanges will broaden the scope of required reporting of such trades to offshore investors and treat foreign and domestic funds the same. The moves follow a slump in stocks that has lasted four years and represent a shift in regulators' attempts to increase scrutiny of quant hedge funds. China tightens quant trading after freezing big funds accounts. Bloomberg. China's main stock exchanges, the Shanghai and Shenzhen bourses, have pledged to enhance monitoring of quantitative trading, particularly in relation to leveraged products. This follows their freezing of accounts belonging to Ningbo Lingjun Investment Management Partnership, after the fund dumped 2.57 billion Chinese yuan, $357 million, of shares in just a minute. The bourses claimed the trades disrupted normal trading order and that certain quant trades can amplify market volatilities. Hong Kong is over unless China fixes its own economy, Roach says. Bloomberg. Bill Ackman's stocks went up. Bloomberg. Bill Ackman's old-school approach to managing a hedge fund, which involves making concentrated high-conviction bets on stocks without hedging much, has its advantages. For example, if you pick a portfolio of stocks that go up, you can spend less time managing your investments and more time enjoying the fruits of your success. While Ackman's approach has become less popular with institutional investors, it appeals to retail investors who are looking for simplicity in lower fees. However, it's important to note that managing a portfolio of stocks still requires a significant amount of work and analysis. In other news, the Al Raji family, founders of Saudi Arabia's largest private bank, recently acquired a majority stake in children's apparel retailer The Children's Place through open market purchases. By accumulating a majority stake in the company without any public contest or negotiated purchases, the Al Raji family was able to acquire control of the company at a lower price compared to the stock's previous trading range. This method of acquiring a public company is not common practice, but it has been used in the past. For example, Warren Buffett acquired control of Berkshire Hathaway in a similar manner in the 1960s. Finally, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's insider trading case against Matthew Panyawat, who is accused of shadow trading on merger news, raises questions about the legality of using inside information about one company to make informed trades on another company that will also be affected by the news. The outcome of this case could provide clarity on the issue and potentially impact the prevalence of shadow trading. ESR owners weighs options for $5 billion logistics firm. Bloomberg. Some of ESR Group's largest shareholders are considering options for the Asian warehouse developer, including taking the company private, after its shares experienced significant declines. The company has also attracted preliminary interest from potential buyers looking at the company or some of its major assets. ESR's shares have fallen almost 70% from their peak in early 2021, while Hong Kong's benchmark Hang Seng Index has dropped about 45% over the same period. ESR manages real estate assets worth about $150 billion in various markets, including China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, Singapore, India, and New Zealand. Bezos wraps up 50 million Amazon stock sale, netting $8.5 billion. Bloomberg. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon.com Inc., has sold 14 million shares of the company worth approximately $2.4 billion. This completes his plan to sell up to 50 million shares, which he disclosed earlier in the month. 
The latest transaction took place over three trading days, bringing his total cash out to $8.5 billion. Bezos, who is the world's third richest person, has not sold any company stock since 2021. He has not disclosed his plans for the proceeds from the sales. Bezos recently announced that he is moving to Miami from the Seattle region, which may save him hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes due to Washington state's capital gains tax. Bezos has a net worth of $191.3 billion. Indonesia to hold key rate as Prabowo win reduces uncertainty. Bloomberg. Indonesia's central bank is expected to keep interest rates on hold at 6% this week due to the election victory of Prabowo Subianto. Subianto's win removes uncertainty from the election process and his pledge to continue President Joko Widodo's policies is likely to shore up investor confidence in the country. The rupiah has underperformed emerging market currencies this year and foreign outflows have increased as markets pull back bets for an early Federal Reserve rate cut. U.S. stock stocks falter, led by Nasdaq, as Nvidia weighs. Yahoo! The heavily weighted chipmaker, Nvidia, saw its shares drop 6% on Tuesday as investors worried that its fourth quarter results will further justify its current expensive valuation. The firm's stock is currently valued at a forward price to earnings ratio of just over 32. South Korea export momentum sustained on electronics demand. Bloomberg. South Korean exports have continued to grow in February, driven by gains in the electronics sector. Adjusted for working day differences, the value of shipments increased 9.9% from a year earlier in the first 20 days of the month. The country's export trends are regarded as a useful indicator for the health of the global economy and the tech sector. Semiconductors, consumer appliances and equipment for manufacturing semiconductors all posted strong increases in exports. Hedge fund Millennium's Asia Equities head Kotecha set to leave. Bloomberg. Vaikesh Kotecha, head of Asia Equities at hedge fund firm Millennium Management, is set to leave the company after four years. Kotecha, who joined the firm from UBS Group in 2020, is one of the highest-profile bankers to switch to Asia's hedge fund industry in recent years. His departure comes amidst fierce competition for talent in the multi-strategy hedge fund sector. Millennium has been aggressively hiring in Asia and has seen several other high-profile departures recently, including former co-CEO Jonathan Xiong, who is starting his own firm, and portfolio managers Sayan Ghosh and Nilesh Banerjee, who moved to North Rock Capital Management. Japan's export growth beats consensus on cars, chip gear. Bloomberg. Japan's exports increased by 11.9% in January, beating economists' expectations of a 9.5% gain. This is a positive sign for Japan, which unexpectedly fell into recession in the last quarter of 2023 due to stagnant domestic spending. The strong export figures may support the Bank of Japan's plan to end its negative rate policy. However, some economists caution that the gains are likely to be temporary, as the timing of the Lunar New Year holidays skewed year-on-year -year comparisons. Additionally, external demand may weaken as Japan's key trading partners are expected to see growth decelerate in 2024. Qantas names John Mullen new chairman to lead board overhaul. Bloomberg. John Mullen, current chair of Treasury Wine Estates and Brambles, has been appointed as the new chairman of Qantas Airways. This comes as the airline faces a reputation crisis after it was accused of selling tickets for flights it had already cancelled. Mullen will join the Qantas board on July 1 and will work with new CEO Vanessa Hudson to address customer concerns and improve the airline's services. Nora Skynkestel, a longtime director, will also join the board on March 1 and will head the remuneration committee. China's state funds seen stepping up stock intervention after jump in ETF assets. South China Morning Post. China's state-run funds have been intervening in the stock market at a faster rate this year, using the assets of major exchange-traded funds, ETFs, to support domestic stock prices. The net assets of China's top five ETFs stood at $79.2 billion on February 9, up from $47.1 billion in 2023. The sharp inflows are seen as a sign of increased market intervention by state-run funds after a three-year slump. However, the state support has yet to reverse major stock losses, with the CSI 300 index still 0.6% below where it started the year. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide.
we encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.